Football legends Alan Ruff and Chris Sutton are on a mission to settle the oldest score in football. Scotland versus England, the old enemy. Scotland are going down. It's the English spell in a willy. As captains of an all-star Scottish and English lineup, they will lead their teams through a series of challenges themed around Group D of the Euros. Oh, come on. Concluding with an epic penalty shootout with a twist. This goes in with one. To decide who will have the crucial bragging rights. No! This is the ultimate old enemy showdown. Let's meet the teams. Scotland are in safe hands with former keeper Alan Ruff captaining the side. Alongside him is professional wrestler Gredo, former women's captain Pauline MacDonald, and Scotland hero Jackie McNamara. Captained by none other than one cap wonder Chris Sutton, the England team going for glory are Aston Villa's Anita Asante, former Blue Peter and Match of the Day kickabout presenter Radzi Chinyanganya, and ex England midfielder Steve Hodge. With four players apiece, each team will be completed by a mystery football legend. We'll find out who later. First, let's hear from the team captains. Well, Chris, we have to welcome you, making the effort to come up here to Scotland. Oh, it's great to come back north of the border and to see the likes of yourself and the rivalry. Yeah. I've always been a really bad loser. I still am a bad loser. But the beauty of this competition against you and your, your Scottish team is that I can't see us losing. Well, we don't mind being underdogs. We're always underdogs. Well, let the battle commence and I hope we pump you. Well, let's see what happens. <laughs> Each side will go head to head across four challenges trying to win power balls. The power balls will be used during the shootout with each one a cunning way to impede the opponent's penalty taker. But before we get to that, we're heading to Croatia for the first of our Group D theme challenges and this one is going to test the taste buds. The task is simple. We've come to a Croatian restaurant where our players will be presented with a traditional Croatian dish. They must taste the food and then name the main ingredient. There are three dishes to try and whoever gives the most correct answers wins a Powerball. Taking on this challenge for Team Scotland is fans' favourite and food lover, Grado. He's taking on Aston Villa's Anita Asante, who has notched up 70 caps to the Lionesses and is ready to devour the competition. So, Anita, I'm going to come to you first because Scotland aren't used to qualifying for major tournaments. What are your memories of the Euros? Yeah, just massive occasion, you know, always getting behind England. It's pretty much the same in the women's game, to be honest. But Scotland not Scotland qualifying? Scotland not qualifying. Wow. We didn't qualify for the Euros because we always concentrated on qualifying for the World Cup. When was the last time Scotland qualified for a World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> and, Greg, do you have a big appetite? Very big appetite. I'm mm. a big lover of food. I'm not a great lover of seafood. Croatia's <laughs> by the sea. Yeah. Right, oh well. well, I like prawns. I like prawn yeah. cocktail at Christmas. OK, well, let's do this then. Yeah. Don't let us let's down. Go for it. Yeah. I think Anita will be into fine dining. I think there's going to be some items that she's going to be put up that she's maybe never tasted before. But I think my man's up for this. I think Anita's going to beat Grado in his leotard into submission. Wham! OK, guys, here we are. And this dish is called Supernik. It is believed to be a prototype of an Italian pizza which the Romans brought to Italy. What we want to know is the main ingredients. You can't say what it smells like, can you? It... I think it smells quite good. Just get stuck in. Mm. You don't get pizzas like this, Stevenson. <laughs> <laughs> don't say what it is, but I can see Grady, you're quite confident with this. Well, it's good to be us. I think Anita is looking very measured. OK, guys, the correct answer is spinach <laughs> pie. Could you turn your cards over? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like seaweed, doesn't it? And you're thinking if it's going to be something exotic, it's not going to be spinach. spinach. Come on, <laughs> exactly. you get spinach in Morrison's, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Bajeli Babrezi also known as Bull's Testicles. Mmm, yummy. Good luck. Good luck. All the best. Mm. Oh, come on. Is that fish? Or it's not that corn, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I think it smells really good. Look, to me, that just looks like chicken, but it's not going to be chicken. Is that nice? Well, it's no chicken. I tell you, I tell you, you both enjoyed that. Have you, have, you, have you got it nailed? 
I think I've got something. Seriously? Something alright about that. Really interesting texture there. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right, guys. Write your answers down now. Gone grey though. I think it's an animal's belly. And an eater. So I went with tofu, but you know. <laughs> so brace yourselves, okay? Right, that okay. actually is bull's testicles. You've oh. just. Wow! How did it say it's, like it's boys? <laughs> 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 Oh, that's giving me the boat now. How do you feel after eating that? Oh, uh, yeah, not good. And it's not? Can I have a taste of it? You want to try that? Yeah, give a shot. There you go. Take it up the road, put it in a piece. <laughs> <laughs> that's definitely bulls. <laughs> As a wrestler, you'd think that Grado would recognise mashed up balls when he sees them. One more dish left to test E the taste buds. Cerny Resort is a cuttlefish ink risotto that really leaves its mark on the taster. Grado needs to get this right, otherwise Anita will take the win. Is it nice? It's not bad, actually. I so hope you get this wrong. No, I swear <laughs> to God, you're going to, be, you're going to be gutted. Yeah. Let's see your tongue. No, I can't, because, <laughs> because that will give him a clue. That's all <laughs> Let's see who comes up, Trump. Who two one. Let's see. Let's see, Anita. <laughs> Octopus. What? <laughs> so what is it? Squid's an octopus, is it no? So with neither guessing cuttlefish, that means Anita takes a 1-0 win. That's a power ball to England. How do you like that? What are you good at? Wait and see. <laughs> well, I'll be good. <laughs> Not the result Scotland were after, as England take an early lead by winning their clown shoes power ball. While Anita and Grado work through their leftovers, next up in Group D, the home match, Scotland. We all know Scotland is home to some of the world's leading artists, so we've come to the House for an Art Lover, designed by the great Charles Rennie Mackintosh, for an art-based challenge. Our players will be given 20 minutes to paint Mr. Alan Ruff. But we've added a football twist. They have to wear goalie gloves. The best drawing of Ruffy, as decided by a guest judge, wins the Powerball. Taking on this challenge, having swapped his Blue Peter badge for the Three Lions, we have Radzi. And current Scotland women's under-17s head coach and former team captain, Pauline MacDonald. Radzi, I'm told that you're an artist. Oh, I'm not sure by who, but I used to work on Blue Peter, so I'm used to pretending I'm good at making stuff. I just said, here's one I made earlier, but it was never me. <laughs> <laughs> Pauline, are you confident? Yeah, yeah, you know, I'm going to bring a lot of energy and enthusiasm to the interpretation of you, and I think colour is always important. So, yeah, I'm confident in my own ability. Looking forward I to like that, that interpretation. I like, that. I like the confidence there. OK, guys, let's get the aprons on. Let's get going. Let's go yes. Back. Obviously, Radzi's a threat. You know, Blue Peter, the things they do on Blue Peter, they're, they're into everything, anything. I'm not so confident about this round because when I lived in Scotland, I had some very good painters and decorators who uh, kitted out my house absolutely brilliantly. This is Scotland's to lose. All right, Radzi, Pauline, three, two, one, start painting. 20 minutes. OK. Have you got lots of blue paint? <laughs> Paul, you started already. You are quick. Pauline, do you feel slightly demotivated that you're painting Alan? <laughs> Definitely not. Alan's been an inspiration to this nation, so I'm more than happy to try and do him justice today. Are you OK, this Pauline, are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you? Silly question, really. Have you ever modelled before? Yeah, well, actually, when you get into a Hall of Fame, oh, you know, wow. uh, you, you do have a portrait hanging in the National Stadium. I'll tell you to see it one day. Yeah. Have you got any grey for the hair as well? Oh, you've done well, actually. Look at this here. Oh, this is... Oh, that is... Oh, my goodness. I need to up my game. You're not coming out of this well, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> right, I don't want to rush you, but you have yep. 30 seconds to finish off. Oh, OK. okay. Oh, that Paul is oh, doing an arm good there. Oh, <laughs> this is Your arm's got really <laughs> long there. Look at that. Three, two... Slow count, Chris. One and a half. <laughs> one, and stop painting. Finish painting. <laughs> and there we have it. Two portrait masterpieces. I'm just glad Alan didn't do a Kate Winslet. 
Deciding a winner is Joy Bain, whose artwork has been exhibited throughout Scotland, so definitely knows a masterpiece from a jelly piece, or Gia's piece. So we're going to have the first reveal here from Radzi. It's a big moment, this, guys. Feast your eyes. Oh, isn't that? That is, it's something. Joy, first impression. Really good. Very impressed. <laughs> Tell us what's good watch, about watch, it, watch. Joy. It says Joy is the best. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pauline, this is looking great. <laughs> if you turn it round, we'll get a better idea. Oh, wow. look at that. Fair play. What can I say? Obviously, a lot of pressure on you. Who is the winner? Well, I've made my decision, and there is a, a clear winner. And the winner is... <laughs> yeah! yeah! Yes! Back in the no. game! <laughs> <laughs> Carry on walking. Yeah. England showing grace and defeat as usual after Pauline's incredible Alan Ruff, which means Scotland have levelled the scores by winning their clown shoes powerball for the shootout. But back to Group D and our next challenge, England. Welcome to Hamilton Crescent, the birthplace of the old enemy football rivalry. In 1872, Scotland and England battled it out for the first time ever with a thrilling game, ending 0-0. As it's a cricket ground, it felt like a good home for the England challenge, which takes our players back to school for a lesson in the Queen's English. They'll each be asked to spell three football players' names. Whoever spells the most correctly wins a Powerball. Sounds simple, but the names won't be. And as we're at the home of the first ever old enemy clash, it felt only fitting for the captains to go head to head on this one. I see you never, you didn't manage to get a hat. That's a dunce's no, hat, that's isn't That's a dunce's hat, is it? This is the way this challenge is going to go. Mm. And there's a spelling challenge, I of see course. It. And uh, I'm, I'm going to read this out first. And this is a gimme, as far as I can see. If you don't get this right, I don't think you're going to get any all the way back to the start of your Scotland career. And you made your debut against? Switzerland. Yeah. Please be Andy Gray. <laughs> <laughs> the game finished 1-0. The goal scorer that night only played five games for Scotland. Who was that? It was uh, Willie Pettigrew. Can you spell Willie Pettigrew? I'm sure you can spell Willie. W-I-L-L-E-P-E. T T G R E W. And that's close, but it's not right. Yeah, it's Mark, not right. You get marks for nearly it's being right. W I L L I E. You missed the I it's out. Scottish. It's Scottish. It's English spelling a willy. <laughs> wow, and that was your easy one. So here we go. He's Slovakian. Mm. He is Lubimar Moritz. <laughs> 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 it's like, Lube, I just used to call no, it Lube. it's the full whack here. L U B O M I R. Possibly. M O R A V C I K. Whoa! Fantastic. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Spot on. <laughs> Spot on. <laughs> You're in massive yeah, trouble cool. after Willie Pettigrew. OK. And this is a guy you came up against in a classic thrashing of Scotland. I couldn't have been in that game. And this guy scored the fourth goal. Paolo Falcao. Paolo Falcao. P-A-L-O. Paolo Falcao. F-A-L. C. <laughs> it's an L. <laughs> and I see and I know. <laughs> All I know right, is it's wrong. Right, okay. You got Paolo wrong. I know. P A L U L. <laughs> Goodness sake. Here we go. Oh, wow. <laughs> this one's so hard I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> Richard oh. Vishke. Richard Vishka. So, Richard. R I <laughs> get Richard right. C H A R D W I T T uh, not not double T W I T S C H G E. 
See, this is public school stuff. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With that guess, teacher's pet Chris seals the victory for England. I think that concludes uh, an embarrassing eight no, for me. No, you did well. You, you got as many as Scotland got on here and they played England the first time yeah. round. Zero. Yeah. Uh, England didn't do so well either that day, Chris. But with that win, England pick up their inner spin power ball, giving them two to Scotland's one. English round and an Englander won and won easily. Scotland, get back in your box. That's what I say. Willy. I just can't get it out of my head. How on earth I got Willy wrong? But uh, can I do it again? No. No, OK. Question is, will he do better in the next round, which is the last country in Group D, the Czech Republic? This Czech challenge has been inspired by the traditional Czech sport of Woodkopf, a pastime that involves balancing a two-metre wooden board on your head and duelling with an opponent. But for this challenge, we've given it a footy makeover. With the boards on their heads, our players need to dribble past a pair of Czech legends and finish with a Panenka-style chip into a basket. There is a chance to pick up two power balls here, one for completing the course by getting a ball in the basket and a bonus one for doing it first. Hoping to avoid a heedful of scales is Scotland international Jackie McNamara and England midfield dynamo Steve Hodge, who's putting his undefeated record against Scotland on the line. Right, Alan, for this challenge we've got two planks, that's Steve and Jackie, <laughs> and a couple of pieces of wood. I think they look pretty confident. Obviously, Jackie's got the skills front to back, you know, a wee bit of balance in between. Uh, I feel quite confident in this one for us. And Steve, what's your record like in the England-Scotland fixtures? Well, pretty Steve? good. Played two. Um, who, was in, who was in goal? Chap to your, your right, 86. And what, uh, was it, what was the score? April, England 1-2-1 at Wembley. Can you remember that game? Yeah, that was my last Scotland-England game of the seven. So, I mean, you wouldn't know anything about these kind of games, but uh, <laughs> they are very important to win. Jackie, you've got a chance today to put one over on Steve, who's 11 years older than you. Would you <laughs> make yourself favourite? You know, I got holes in my head for last year, Chris, and different <laughs> injuries, so, you know, I think it's a bit of a leveller. Well, Steve's got a dodgy hip as well, yeah. so that might... <laughs> <laughs> Should be a classic. <laughs> I think anybody who saw Jackie playing, but he's got great balance, very fast. I think he's got all the attributes to, to be very good at this challenge. If we win this one, then Scotland would have a mountain to climb. They would have their very own Ben Nevis. OK, guys. Yeah. Three, two, one, go. Good start, good Steve. Good start, Jack. Good start, Steve. Well done, Jackie. You've go on, Steve. It. You got it. Oh, no, that's oh. OK, that's, that's OK. A bad start. Wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. pressure's on. Good, Steve. Go on. Go on <laughs> you should be disqualified, Jack. No, That's all you can do, that. Oh, okay, wow. pressure's on. Good, Steve. Go on. Set. Go on, Steve. You're ahead. So the Scots have never had balance, have Set they? You're one good head, there. Get there. Go on, Steve. Don't let us down now, Steve. Big Steve. moment. Go on. <laughs> wow, Steve has smashed the course for England, but Jackie can still pick up a power ball. He's got three attempts to get a ball in the basket. Come on, Jackie! Get this and I'll give you the money myself. Go on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> can we move the basket closer? <laughs> <laughs> you need the ball, Jackie. Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, I won! Does that count? So despite losing the head-to-head, -head, Scotland pick up their inner spin power ball for completing the course. But with the win, England have added fear goggles and moved the spot to their power balls for the shootout. That was obviously a difficult challenge. I thought Jackie hung on in there and got a, what could be a very, very important point for us. I can't wait for the shootout now. Bring it on. We have the power balls. We have the power. Scotland are going down. I wouldn't get too confident, Chris. We all know anything can happen when it comes to penalties, especially for England. Time to see if history will repeat itself because it's what we've been waiting for, the penalty shootout. First to the pitch are Scotland, who have the odds stacked against them, but are at their most dangerous as the underdogs. 
And here's Team England, who at this stage are very much the favourites. So this is it then, Alan. This is what it comes down to. And I think you've noticed there's only four of us so far, and we've got our star man, our legend. Who? And I think our Who? legend is Who? better than yours. Do you tell me first, who's yours? Well, What's yours done? I think my legend has possibly scored the best goal in any World Cup that you've ever seen, Archie Gemmel. In the 1978 World Cup, Archie scored what is widely considered the best goal ever seen in a World Cup. We went bonkers when Archie slotted it in. He went on to earn 43 caps for Scotland, scoring eight goals. Look at that, the legend. He's still got it. Well, I tell you what, I can trump that because my man has scored a hat-trick in the World Cup final. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. We've got Sir Jeff Hurst. Immortalised by his heroics during the World Cup final of 66. Hurst has got some people are on the pitch. They think it's all over. It is now. Sir Jeff Hurst notched up 49 caps for England, scoring 24 times. So, Sir Jeff, tell us about your experience of playing against Scotland. Well, the main experience is beating them most, most of the occasion. <laughs> and what was your first ever game against Scotland? Did you win? Did you score? Of course. What a silly question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my second game was against Scotland at Hampden Park in front of 134,000 screaming Scots, and we won 4-3 and I scored my first international goal, so memories of that will always stay with me. And can Archie trump that, Alan? Yeah, I think Archie can. Obviously, you've scored what is the greatest goal ever in the World Cup. Could you talk us through that? It was that long ago, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. What I can remember was that when I initially got the ball, I knew exactly what I was going to do straight away. Beat the first man, second man, third man, fourth man, and all of a sudden, I was there in front of the goalkeeper. So what did I do? Put it in the net. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I have to add to that, I actually started the build-up to that goal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I you remember it distinctly. Me, you got it. So, Alan, shall we get on with it then? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Come on, on yeah. Yeah. So, two national icons complete our team lineups. And with that, I'll hand you over to your commentator for the shootout, another national icon, Archie McPherson. Good afternoon, and welcome to the ultimate old enemy penalty shooter. Remember, Scotland have two power balls to England's four. To activate them, the captain just needs to shout, power ball, and the kicker will suddenly find the penalty a whole lot harder. First up for Scotland is Jackie McNamara. He's a cool customer, always was. Power ball, power ball! And Chris has activated his first power ball, which is on the spot. So, back the ball goes five yards. Right, Jackie. Jackie lining up is essentially a free kick now and does it. Beautifully swept away. Consummate coolness. Oh, stop. Absolutely great technique. He seemed completely unfazed by those extra yards. Here we go. No pressure, Anita. Anita Asante is first up for England with a taste for victory after the earlier challenge. How will she fare here? Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, she puts it over the bar and possibly the stand as well. Grado is stepping up next with evidence of his earlier defeat remaining. All the best, Grado. Mainly in his teeth. Power ball! Power <laughs> ball! That's England's second power ball, and this time it's in a spin. Ten times round the ball and shoot. You're not very nimble. Right. He's wrestling with himself for a change. Ten. Now, Take your time. how does it all end? Balance? Composure? <laughs> no, the very opposite. Well, plenty of movement there in the slow motion replay, not just in the legs. That's heading for the East Coast. But did I look good when I was spinning about an eye? Next up for England, Steve Hodge. <laughs> He has an unblemished record against the Scots. Oh! Look at that. <laughs> Showing his experience there. Wow. Pure class. Enormous. And there's plenty of experience in the Scotland jersey with Pauline, which is probably why Chris has played the beer goggles power ball to blur her vision. Oh, oh, Pauline did well even to hit the ball there. It's a shame she couldn't hit the target. 
which means Radze could put England ahead with a goal here. Oh. Looks like Alan doesn't fancy taking that risk. He's used Scotland's first power ball. In a spin. Can Radze do better than Grado? How many? That's ten. Can he recover? A wobble and a failure. <laughs> I don't think that one was prepared earlier. A disaster for England. And the score remains one each. <laughs> Here comes Archie Gable. Unlike his wonder goal against the Netherlands, he has only one player to beat this time round. Should be easy. Powerball, powerball! Commentators curse there. Chris has activated England's final powerball. Cool as he always was, but with clown's feet. Oh, <laughs> Not even the immaculate gamble could overcome that. No small feat, literally. But still the score remains level. From one legend to another. And no legends come bigger than this one. Sir Jeff Hurst. He's won a World Cup, surely. Oh! Oh! A cheeky little panenka there, or was it a toe poke? You be the judge. Done with consummate ease and telling the youngster how to do it. History is about to be made. Alan Ruff to take a penalty kick. The man who used to save them time after time. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not like that. He's amused. And so is the English captain. Look at that. Side footing with a striker's ease. To each. But there's one player left for England. If he scores, it's all over. Pressure on the cap. Power ball! <laughs> Alan has saved Scotland's final power ball until the last kick. And it's no laughing matter for Chris, as it's clown shoes. Captain of England, Chris Sutton, could win this for his country. Go on, Chris! Oh! oh, what a calamity for Chris and Team England. So, with nothing to choose between the teams after five penalties each, we're in to sudden death. And back to avenge her beer goggle miss earlier is Polly. 65 caps for Scotland with an awesome responsibility. Yeah. <laughs> what a solid penalty from Pauline piling the pressure on England. And Captain Chris Sutton nominates Radzi to take this vital penalty to keep England in the competition. Responsibility on a young lad who wants to bring this home for his country. Yeah! Oh, what a disaster for England. Once again, losing on the big occasion on penalties. Scotland win the shootout. They are the ultimate old enemy showdown champions. Scotland did well. They, I'm not going to say they deserved the victory. They got the job done. But can they get the job done on the big stage? That's what I say. Good luck to them. They'll need it. Fantastic for the team. Fantastic for Scotland. Winners again. Champions.